All right, here's a fairly large silver maple we did last week. This was the original rigging setup. I'm guessing this tree is probably 65 feet tall or so. And what I wanted to point out with this video was how the side reach of this particular bucket truck we used here, which is an Altec LR560 E7, it's got the elevator on it. This truck was put, we, that, that tree was hemmed in by wires and the truck couldn't get back any further than where it was right there because of the two sets of wires. And uh, with that elevator unit, I was surprised at how much side reach we had. I was able to do almost this entire tree from the bucket. I had to jump out and do one back leave without the bucket. So this tree was hemmed in by wires on three sides. There was there to the left, service lines to the right, and service lines in the back that you can't see from this angle. It was pretty tight with the wires. My bucket, the reach with that bucket was limited. That's about as far as I could get right there. So I was setting, I set the, the lower line through that natural crotch with the pole saw and then was reaching out and uh, near balance point tying these, these limbs with, again, setting the line with the pole saw and then was able to cut them and have plenty of clearance from the wires. On this particular one, I asked the fellow running the lowering line to uh, let it run away from me a little bit. Uh, here you can see a shot. Well, it's tough to say, but there you can see that lower boom is just about right up on those service lines. I think it was just a little clearance there, and even below that wire you can't see is a, is a communication line, which is that actually the carrot is right up on the communication line. Anyhow, here's the cut. Comes down. Nice and slow, and then I release the cut. On that first cut, there was plenty of room to allow the piece to run a little bit. On this next cut, it was fairly tight, and I would not have asked the, the operator, the, the ground man, to allow the piece to run. However, it looks from the video like he did let it run which uh, and it just barely touched the wire. We'll take a look at that in a second. So I'm not sure if that makes him good or not good. If he, maybe he was good enough to let it run a little bit and just barely touched the wires without damaging anything. Maybe he shouldn't have let it run at all. It was a case of poor communication on my part. It's tough to say. But anyhow, let's take a look at the video and see what happens. Here I'm setting a run and bowling. There's a good shot of that service line very close to the lower boom. And actually you can see that lower line there running across the screen is uh, touching the carrot area. But here's the cut. And if you look on to the, to the left of your screen, you can see those three wires out there. And they just barely get touch right there. It looks like maybe six inches or a foot in the replay. Let's take a look at that slow motion. Watch those branch tips as they come down. Past the turret. And it just looks like inches. In any case, he's definitely letting the piece get lowered out. Let's watch that piece as it gets lowered. Touches the wires there. And he's lowering it out. It's tough to say. Maybe he didn't let it lower that. That didn't let it out too much on that line until after it cleared the wires. And here's a good shot showing all the side reach of that truck. That truck makes that tree look a lot smaller than it really is because it's such a big truck. Reaching out, there's no way I, that's, you know, six, eight feet beyond the reach of my, of the bucket there. And so there's no way I could have set the line out there without the use of the pole. Once that piece is tied out that far, now I have no worries about the clearance. I know the tips are going to clear the, the wires here.
That is full extension. on the floor side as well. So at this point the tops are out and I can butt tie everything. In this case butt tying definitely keeps those pieces moving down and away from me while I'm in the bucket. A little safer and there's not enough weight to worry about the additional shock loading that butt tying causes. Simply a quick undercut. Piece ball straight away. On this particular one, I just want to note one thing, that uh, the placement of the knot, you see I tie the knot where it's convenient to tie, and then I pull it around so that it's facing on the top side of that limb. Uh, that keeps the, the piece from rolling. If the knot is on the bottom side of the cut, then it's going to roll as soon as it takes the weight. That nice deep notch. To make sure that the cut undermines the center of gravity very well so that there's no doubt that it's going to go to the face when the back cut's made. Yeah, and then it's lowered out. And here's the next cut, which actually I just did a rip cut on this one. Sometimes on these final cuts it's just simple to do a rip cut. There's no weight on the end of them. And it makes a nice clean cut. And here I am uh, doing some rigging down the spar or negative blocking, whatever you want to call it. Now, if that piece is real heavy, I won't use a clove hitch on it. That's a clove hitch with two half hitches, and I tuck the tail there. If that piece is very heavy, then then uh, it's got to be tied with a half hitch backed up with a running bowl. It's much easier to untie than, than the, the clove hitch. And you can see how one of the other things, I like to make my cuts very close to, to that sling. The higher that block is, the less force is going to go on those lines. So uh, it has some more to do with how much the piece falls than anything else. And uh, you leave a little slop and play in that block or a lot of room between the cut and the block, you're going to have a lot more shock loading on the, on the piece. So that was a cow hitch with a better half and and then uh, just tuck the tail a little bit too on that one. One of the other moves I like to make is leaving the saw in the cut while the knot is tied rather than putting it back in the scabbard in the bucket and pulling it out. So it just saves a, a little bit of an extra movement, a little bit of time on each cut it really adds up and all the seconds add up on a tree job so anything you can do to make things efficient better off you'll be and uh, this is one of the things we end up blocking down a lot of wood like this all right so i hope you enjoyed watching and catch the video sometime soon thanks a lot